Well, guys, Trump has officially gone to the dark side. No, 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 no. It happened. All of that stuff happened. Or that's at least what it feels like for half of conservatives. But I'm talking about the half that are primarily Christian first before they're conservative. So for context, many politicians are going out of their way to let the public know their hard stances on various issues. But there is one political issue that is particularly always the most debated, or for sure, the top three, and that is the right to life. And Donald Trump, in fashion, put out his statement defining his view on this topic, which has literally ticked off so many Christian voters. Many people have asked me what my position is on and rights. And everyone, and I mean everyone in the conservative movement, is talking about what this means for Christians, specifically about how we decide to vote as believers. So I am pretty much done with the Republican Party. In this video, we're going to be talking about why Christians are going absolutely nuts about Trump's stance on the right to life. And we will look at how conservatives are responding. So with that said, some questions to think about. What does it mean to believe in the right to life? Should the Republican Party fear the Christian vote? And what does it mean to vote for the lesser of two evils? Don't go anywhere. Let's talk about it. So we really need to break down Trump's stance on pro-life because I think we just assumed it was whatever the opposite of the Democratic Party believed. And I think this was probably true for the most part before the 2020 election. But Trump and his team want to win, and that calls for a new plan. If the rhetoric of the possibility of post-birth procedures was being thrown out there by the left, then it was kind of just assumed that on the right, it was the opposite. That life is at conception, and there should be a restriction on the termination of birth at any point after that. And yet Trump said this. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks, or some will have more conservative than others, and that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. Listen, this is probably one of the most controversial topics in politics, and there's a reason for this. If you're a Christian, life is the utmost key tenet in the Christian faith. After all, Jesus himself said he came to give life, and that much more abundantly. And I think this is why Christians are so upset. Because of all the baggage Trump has as a candidate, and he has a lot, a lot of baggage, and this was the one thing that secured a vote for him and the Republican Party from Christians. But conservatives and Christians think he might have soiled his chance from gaining Christian voters now. Soiled it! Soiled it! You see, Trump's stance on the right to life basically boils down to these things. It should be up to the states. He's not going to do a national ban. And there should be exceptions for extreme cases. He states he is a true believer in the will, will of, of the, the people, people and points to Reagan era policy on the issue because many states will have different cutoff weeks. So... What exactly are Christians upset about? Well, if you're a Christian who also happens to be a conservative, or maybe you're not a conservative, but just a one-issue voter, and you're already for sure not voting Democrat for reasons, then your stance on the right to life basically boils down to this. The life of an unborn child is precious in any state and in any situation, regardless of whatever popular opinion prevails in the culture. Obviously, this doesn't apply to everyone that may call themselves a Christian, but it is a very close description of what those who are firm believers in the right to life believe. But Trump's stance seems confusing because he applauded what happened in Alabama with the Supreme Court. Frozen embryos created during IVF are now considered unborn children, and irresponsibly disposing of them can lead to repercussions. And that, I feel like, is more pro-life than anything. All right, so let's look at a few clips of what Trump exactly says about his stance. The Republican Party should always be on the side of the miracle of life. You must follow your heart on this issue. But remember, you must also win elections to restore our culture and, in fact, to save our country, which is currently and very sadly a nation in decline. Which then Christians reacted like this. What? What? What the what? fuck? You didn't catch it. This is about votes. And Trump wants to ensure that he is not on the extremist side when it comes to this topic. In fact, he not only wants us to believe that the Democrats are the extremists, which you may believe that, but also that he is the moderate in this position. The Babylon Bee said, Trump says his position on abortion is whichever one will get him elected. Someone else said, that's not parody. Trump basically said exactly that. The question we need to be asking is, is Trump okay with losing Christian voters for the sake of gaining some liberal democratic left-leaning votes. Ali Bestucki mentions that Christians make up a huge voting block, but Christians essentially have zero presidential candidates who are vying for our votes specifically on this issue 
to the degree that Christians want it to be. And while Trump arguably is more pro-life than every other candidate, his stance on this is still downright sad. And she makes a good point here because pro-life voters were choosing to vote for Trump because he is the most pro-life candidate we've had in history. And yes, we have seen a lot of wins for the pro-life movement in the last several years because of the decisions Trump has made. I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of Roe v. Wade. But there's a difference between supporting the right to life and wholeheartedly believing in the right to life on a personal level. And perhaps Trump does believe in the right to life. But to him and his administration, the idea of winning seems a lot more important. The Democrats are the radicals on this because they're willing to have in the seventh, eighth, ninth month. They're even willing, and you can call it what you want, but you go back to the governor of Virginia, the previous governor of Virginia, the Democrat governor of Virginia, where he talked about execution of a baby after birth. And you can say what you want, but that's extreme and that's radical, and nobody should have that, and it has to be ended. Please, go ahead. So Trump is strategically positioning himself as the common sense candidate. This is why he is not in favor of a ban, and he is not taking the position that so many Christians would love for him to take. Notice that he strategically mentions that he was a Democrat back in his New York days. And again, Ronald Reagan is name dropped, also a Democrat. When I was in New York and when I was a Democrat also, just like Ronald Reagan, you know, Ronald Reagan was a Democrat. We sort of followed a very similar path. But if you look at what we've done with Roe v. Wade, we did something that everyone said couldn't be done, and we got it done. And I give great credit to the Supreme Court and the, the justices for having the courage to do it. What they did is very simply give it back to the state. And this is to contrast how modern day Democrats are essentially the radicals now. They are the extremists, late term, post birth. Those are significant word choices. And all Trump wants to do is leave it up to the states, which is the moderate position. Trump was asked what he thought when it came to Arizona. Mr. President, did Arizona go too far? Did Arizona go too far? Yeah, they did. I mean, it'll be straightened out. And as you know, it's all about states' rights. That'll be straightened out. And I'm sure that the governor and everybody else are going to bring it back into reason. And this key part is what Christians specifically are upset about. Trump believes that he is pro-life, but he is not happy with the idea of a law that will essentially promote the ultimate ideal pro-life situation. Lila Rose says... It was never about states' rights if you are saying the state went too far. More pro and talking points today from Trump deeply disappointed. Exactly. Why criticize what a state decides to do after saying whatever a state decides to do is the law of the land. It's one thing to push for states' rights, but if you're truly pro-life, shouldn't you encourage those states, especially Republicans, to choose life as much as possible? Someone asked, what's wrong with saying the states should decide? I believe that's exactly what the Supreme Court said. Michael Knowles responded, it's as wrong to murder babies in New Jersey as it is in Tennessee. Prudence is the highest political virtue, so I'm not saying I reject the tactic, but the principle remains. So this is where the notion of two things can be true at the same time comes in. And what Knowles says is true. The right to life should apply regardless of state. And being strategic in winning votes isn't exactly something to scoff at, especially during an election year. Okay, let me do my best to explain the social backlash that Republicans are facing from Christian voters right now. Carrie Lake, a Trump-endorsed candidate for U.S. Senate in Arizona, released her statement about Arizona's decision, and her campaign team has been doing major damage control. She states that she also opposes Arizona's ruling and wants a more common-sense solution. And because of this, Babylon B saw the perfect opportunity for satire, as they do. And they put out, Carrie Lake announces plan to lose another election, but this time while supporting baby murder in which the Carrie Lake campaign team intern that's running their Twitter responded, this is reprehensible and it isn't even valid satire. Disgusting. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. It's obvious Carrie Lake freaked the freak out after seeing the backlash from her statement and in classic Parks and Rec fashion began damage control. Save her precious department, even though it meant closing the shelter. Now, I'm not saying that Leslie Nope is a dog murderer, per se. I just think that her actions raise some questions. Like, for example, is she a dog murderer? Oh, God. Well, I don't know the answer to that, Jennifer, but your tone makes me think, yes. And what happens next in what is a very bad look for Carrie Lake, her campaign team and the Babylon Bee go back and forth several times. And obviously, Carrie Lake and her team want to maintain a very specific image of who she is, as most politicians do. 
called PR. You know, the thing Republicans are notorious for being awful at. I just uh, answered a whole bunch of questions. The issue here is language because Lake keeps using terminology like choice and decision, which are huge buzzwords from the Democratic Party. Listen to what she says here. And I want to make sure that women, when they do walk into an abortion clinic, actually have a choice. Maybe Republicans are just trying to rebrand what it means to be pro-choice. But also, they probably should have sent out a memo because I don't think people are picking up what they're putting down. That is so fetch. Gretchen, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. Someone said, can you post a clip that doesn't help prove his point next? Yeah, I don't think we should be shocked by people's responses here. I mean, take a look at this man and what he says specifically. So I am pretty much done with the Republican Party. I just wanted to hop on here and say that I am, I don't think I'm a Republican anymore. Um, you know, I've just been doing a lot of soul searching. Uh, Carrie Lake, Donald Trump, just standing on uh, the necks of children. Sorry, dude. I'm done. I'm not going to do that. And the question I have for you guys is how bad, how bad does it have to get? You know, if, if Donald Trump tomorrow said that the uh, Republican Party now accepts transgenderism or homosexuality, is that enough now for you to for you to back out and say no more? Um, how long are you going to keep playing this lesser to the, of two evils game? I mean, is it if, when it when it gets to the point where we are now our choices are between Hitler and Stalin? Is it that point? I mean, everybody has a line that they have to play. And I, I can already hear the haters. I can already hear people saying, well, AJ, what, you know, we have to maintain power. And, uh, and this is exactly what the other side wants, right? This is exactly what they want. They want you to, to play into their whole hand to where, and what, well, you know what? Sorry. Um, Trump should have thought about that. And we, you know, he should be fearing us more than he fears the left. He should be rallying our, us as our base to stand on the value and sanctity of human life. Conservatives are not going to like this response. And I think we are seeing an internal split between Christ first conservatives and Christ less conservatives. The Republican party needs to understand that the only reason Christians are choosing to vote red is because of their stance on the right to life. If we look at the data, 28% of registered voters will only vote for candidates who share their position on an issue. And 62% of Republicans who oppose legal termination of a baby are Protestant. And 74% of white evangelical Protestants think it should be illegal in all or most cases. My issue is that conservatives have openly been critical of liberal talking points, right? Vote blue no matter who and not voting for Biden is a vote for Trump, but now we're seeing conservatives spout the very same things. Someone said, the comments here show just how uncaring many conservatives are about preborn babies. If you disagree with him, that's fine. You're free to vote for the lesser evil. But stop attacking a man for refusing to choose between those two evils. Some of these Christians who really have an issue of Trump's stance are the leading figures that have been upholding the pro-life movement. People who have spent their whole careers preserving the right to life. And while I understand the strategic notion conservatives are going for, it doesn't make sense to compromise on this issue and risk losing such a strong voting base. Michael Knowles chimed in and he said, this is a profoundly ill-advised approach to the issue that will repel pro-lifers while failing to attract left-leaning supporters. It's one thing to downplay as a matter of prudence during a campaign. It's quite another to proclaim Democrat talking points from 2008. Matt Walsh said, I have to laugh at these conservatives who are suddenly declaring that the only way for Republicans to win is to be a moderate on the issue. As if that's some startling new insight. You guys are just repeating the same talking point that the Republican establishment has been hammering for decades. How well has this moderate strategy worked out? Have you people been paying attention at all? But maybe Christians are the disillusioned ones. I understand fighting the good fight, but Christian conservatives are aligning themselves with the party where overall... 34% of Republicans actually are fine with a legal under any circumstance situation. And only 13% say illegal in all circumstances. Conservative Christians have received so much flack from progressive Christians and liberals for looking past all of Trump's flaws and still voting for him. So you'll have to excuse us if there is a little bit of a shock to hear Democratic talking points coming out of the mouth of the man who we're supposed to vote for come November. You were the chosen one! So with Trump's stance on the right to life, we are now again 
left with choosing between the lesser of two evils. And this is a common phrase thrown out frequently in the political discourse. Another similar quote is actually by Charles Spurgeon, who famously said, of two evils, choose neither. But is this quote actually about elections and choosing political candidates? One of the worst things about politics is that it forces us into positions that ideally we do not want to be in. I actually think most people don't have the bandwidth to choose between the lesser of two evils. At the same time, I don't think shaming people who have a moral and ethical issue with being forced to choose said evils is not the way or beneficial to the overall conversation. The pressure should be on the candidate and the politicians, not the voters or the people. I don't think Republicans understand how much damage they can do to their campaigns when they take on Democratic talking points or compromise on issues that the right has championed for so long in the hopes of seeming more moderate. It is constantly debated if Christians are even supposed to be engaged in the political fight, and we get enough flack from the left and progressives telling us that we should stay out of it. But there's also other ways to participate other than just voting. Changing the culture and influencing people to change their hearts on key issues are also a significant tactic, which many pro-life advocates have been doing. Christians weren't against Roe v. Wade because we believed it violated states' rights. We were against it because our God believes in life. Thus, so do we. Now, is Trump a Christian? Is he biblically pro-life? No, he is not, and anyone that says otherwise is naive. But the question we need to ask, the question Christians need to ask before they go to the polls to vote is, which candidate will, to the furthest degree, allow for more babies to live?